Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. Uh, this is um, a public lecture on the relevance of Bonhoeffer's theology in the light of a case study and reflect theological thinkers. This lecture seeks to explore the relevance of Bonhoeffer theology for, practi for the practitioner's own context. It is hoped that the interaction with uh, a case study and other thinkers such as Venier, Nietzsche and Dawkins will bring to light significant and important findings concerning Bonhoeffer's theology and how it relates to the practitioner's context. This essay is in six parts, methodology, life together, cost of discipleship, ethics, prison letters and conclusion. Methodology. The case study which the practitioner wishes to consider is a Bible study group which the practitioner has been running for a number of months. The Bible study group was started for non-churchgoers. It was conducted in the practitioner's home. It has own, grown rapidly over, with a variety of unity. Interviews were conducted with all the members of the group in each person's home. Each interview was conducted with qualitative-based research. This contained a structured interview with open questions. The questions were de uh, designed to ascertain the respondent's view on a variety of issues which related to the practitioner's reading of Bonhoeffer. The theoretical justification for using a case study which, with, with qualitative interviewing is as follows. There are two criticisms of case study method. One is it is only an explanatory tool. The other is it can fail to be empirical. The case, quote, quote, the case study research method is an empirical inquiry that investigates a contemporary phenomenon within its real life context, end of quote. Notice the word empirical in Yin's idea. He is right by providing validity, consistency, and true value. Notice Yin's comments above real life context. The case study is a good way to engage in contextual thinking. This is why the practitioner has chosen this method because it will help locate his theological thinking in the concrete contextual base. For example, telecom communications use the case study method to develop their own future practice. The case study method has been used by J.D. Roberts who studied Martin Luther King with Bonhoeffer as a hermeneutic. His thesis is that Bonhoeffer helps us to understand the black civil rights movement and King's life. Larry Romson's work is a case study of, the, of Bonhoeffer's brothers with special emphasis on Carl Frederick's influence on Bonhoeffer's theology during his time in prison. The quality method was used to help give a greater appreciation of the contextual nuances of the cultural It has been important to let the respondents have a voice. Triangulation or the quantitative method could have been used but statistical analysis cannot account for the more subtle aspects of a culture. The final part of the methodology is the correlation model. It is hoped that as the practitioner seeks to understand how Bonhoeffer relates to other thinkers, this will help to clarify Bonhoeffer's theology in contemporary culture and in the exchange arena of public ideas. The strength of the correlation model is that it does seek to engage secular culture on the prevailing standards of intellectual inquiry which that culture advocates. It is also dialogical rather than apologetic. Carl Rayner, Rosemary Radford and Paul Tillich have used this method. Thomas Aquinas also used this method which his theory that human reason unaided by revelation can know theological truth. As we move on to the next part of this lecture, the point of the practitioner is to examine his own context and how Bonhoeffer theology relates to that context. The case study helps to engage in the practitioner's context. The correlation method helps take the practitioner's context and engage in the wider culture. Life Together. I shall try to examine in this lecture if Bonhoeffer's book Life Together is able to help form a local community. Life Together was written by Bonhoeffer as a seminary principal at Finkenwell with the aim to develop his students into spiritual community. At the time the Nazi political crisis was gathering storm and the fifth decree, the fifth decree 
was passed in 1935 which allowed the Nazis to interfere in church affairs. The political tensions can be felt in the book as Bonhoeffer was preparing his students for the trials ahead. During this time the seminary was trying of Nazi totalitarianism. Bonhoeffer pressed on developing a student community. Life Together was the future fruit of this project. A typical day at the seminary would be as follows. Quote, the day began with half an hour of common worship, which included Bible reading, music and prayers. Immediately after breakfast, the ordinance were expected to meditate for half an hour in silence on a single passage of 10 to 15 verses of scripture, end of quote. Room, page 89. This quote is important as it gives his, us a practical example of how Bonhoeffer's theological reflection developed into life together. His book. It was a, a perspective almost, re, prescriptive almost regimented spirituality. Bonhoeffer, page 28. Life together experience such as confession, forgiveness and brotherhood. His foundation was a Christology of objectivity looking on Christ's justification and word. Bonhoeffer page 11, Life Together. This was the theological base for Bonhoeffer's building community. In contrast to Bonhoeffer, there are some interesting findings concerning the respondent's view of community. In the various respondents, I, I, I name I named them B1D1A1E1, but unless I publish this lecture, you're not going to really understand these various terms. I'll just use respondents. The respondents feel community life has been lost. Some respondents, i.e. people who I interviewed, see some existential significance in small groups, such as church group. A respondent... and it's quite complex um, to try and reduce it to a more simpler understanding for those who, who can't read the lecture. Respondent, a respondent um, from an Islamic group and a respondent from a gay village. This poses the question, how does Bonhoeffer relate to wider community formation, say in the city? and can he help to develop smaller communities? Even though a tier fund report says that 53% of the UK population claim to be Christian, it is doubtful if Bonhoeffer's project could be applied to large populations in the UK. That is because he has a narrow Christology and regimented spirituality which a multicultural and secular culture could not sustain. Over 60% of UK population are of other faiths and 39% claim the respondent's interest in smaller groups suggests that the practitioner Bible study group could be used to provide a small surrogate community but not try to create a larger community based on Christian values. Bonhoeffer clearly sees his community to be rooted in particular Christology, Chalcedon and Reformational, but the respondents do not share his Christology. The practitioner realizes that in his context, if one is to build a small community, Bonhoeffer would not be helpful if it was reaching non-believers, as the Bible studies freedom of thought on Christology must be maintained if one is to go and reach unbelievers. Bonhoeffer's prescription for spirituality would also hinder non-believers in their freedom expression of expert spirituality. Um, However, just an aside, um, Bonhoeffer's book, Live Together, as far as a Christian community is concerned, is a brilliant resource in providing the right Christology, um, the right um, emphasis on the Word of God. But if we're trying to reach a wider culture, um, such ideas in his book, um, and not evangelistically minded. Vanier shares some ideas which with Bonhoeffer he believes in God's love and the importance of Christology but in his book and community he has a much wider understanding of the Western secular culture's needs. His engagement with Western communities is 
with a tender ontology that keeps his Christology and religious practice in the background. He sees each community in full, uh, in full of broken people who need self-actualization and self-affirmation. Banyer believes it, if, if we and that will create community. This method seems more practical for the practitioner's context as it seeks to affirm people's identity rather than by change them. Manier can be weak in that it seems to see humans in terms of brokenness and never as already fully whole. So contrasting Vanier, uh, the Catholic theologian, with Bonhoeffer's understanding of community, um, we see two different models here. Um, I do think that Vanier's model is really helpful in reaching the broken and the needy because it's non-judgmental. But I do think that I do agree with Vanier and Bonhoeffer that you have to have a Christology. And that Christology has to be that Jesus is the Savior, that he died on a cross, and there should be the challenge to whether your own Christian community or whether it be a secular community, the most the exclusiveness of Christ and a challenge to the communities to believe in Jesus and trust in him. The next cost of discipleship. There is some important background information to remember as we look at the book and consider discipleship. That is the book, Cost of Discipleship, written by Bonhoeffer. First, Bonhoeffer was a biblical theologian influenced by Shalata and Barth. Second, he was interested in the world and how faith related to it, influenced by Harnack. Third, he was influenced by Lutheran scholarship, Renaissance, posting Christ in his social implications, advocated by Dr. Hall. His book should be read alongside Life Together. A central loci of the book is the concept of hiddenness. Finally, Chalcedon Christology is the foundation of the work. As to the issue of discipleship, the respondents seem one group of respondents seem clear about what discipleship means. However, other respondents or interviewees lack clarity as to their understanding. These two groups contrast sharply with Bonhoeffer's detailed explanation of discipleship. For Bonhoeffer, the disciple's life is in prayer and fasting. He talks a lot about costly grace, a reaction to nominal Lutherism, the risk of Peter. The, the risk of Peter is an example of costly grace. Bonhoeffer details on discipleship must be able to help the group understand discipleship, giving depth. And Bonhoeffer might be able to help the group who don't understand to see what the Christian life is like. There are aspects in Bonhoeffer's program on discipleship that might be problematic for my context. He criticizes those who would question the Bible. This would encourage a blind biblicism on the respondents, which would not bring an alienation are part of discipleship. Some of the respondents have emotional issues, such as uh, a couple of the questioners have. One has learning difficulties, the other struggles with substance abuse. Bonhoeffer's teaching could um, exacerbate their problems. Also in chapter 20. 21 and 22 and 23, Bonhoeffer talks about the Christian worker, but teaching on Christian service seems too advanced at the stage in the light of some of the uh, respondents' lack of understanding of discipleship. Also, Bonhoeffer's idea of costly grace might be too demanding for all the question respondents, respondents at the time for the same reasons above. If we compare Bonhoeffer with Nietzsche, we are struck how the German philosopher sees the cross as a revulsion. For Bonhoeffer, the cross is central to develop. This theology is calamitous and a weakness. Nowhere in the respondents do we see such a strong reaction to Christianity, such as negative tone as Nietzsche. To Nietzsche, also note, not one respondent has mentioned to believe in yourself. Or, or will to power as Nietzsche would. However, Nietzsche's thoughts on the cross that it is anti life does have some truth. In Bonhoeffer, he talks about the old man dying to the world in baptism. There is a gloomy a gloominess in Bonhoeffer, as nowhere does he talk about enjoying life. But Bonhoeffer does have 
an understanding of human as love at the heart of his discipleship. Nietzsche, on the other hand, saw the Dionysian as the true nature of humanity, but emphasizing the passionate and the emotional side of humanity at the cost of the intellectual and scientific side of what personality is. Nietzsche was also gloomy and pessimistic, even though he talked about optimism. What all this means for my context is Bonhoeffer on discipleship is helpful to the respondent for educational purposes. He has a healthy view of humanity's mutual purpose, but he must be used with care as, the neg as his negativity about life can be too demanding and too advanced for the respondents in my Bible study group. However, I have to say that, just as uh, for extra information on this, that the cost of discipleship by Bonhoeffer was absolutely um, prophetic. At the time, it was the, the rise of the Nazi movement, and what Bonhoeffer was trying to do was galvanize the Lutheran churches to have more of, of works and to stand up politically against Nazism. And that's what he was trying to achieve in the book. And the book also is a brilliant expose of the teaching of Jesus. And is a spiritual classic. And even though some of it might not be relevant in my particular context of um, Bible study with certain individuals, his book has a massive relevance for the church nationally and internationally. For it provides an encouragement to live the life of Jesus that he wants us to live. And so therefore, it, the book needs to be reread and reread by many people today. Bonhoeffer's book, Ethics. So far I have explored community and discipleship, now I consider shame, ancient Greek culture and suicide. In order to understand the book on ethics, a few preliminary remarks are in order. Bonhoeffer was entered in social action, which is shown when he visited Harlem in America and set up a youth group there. Bonhoeffer's epistemology is vital to decode the ethics. In Sanctum Communio, Christ, quote, Sanctorum Communio, his uh, book, Christ exists in the church. Bonhoeffer takes this idea but challenges world-denying Protestants and seeks to engage with secular world in practical, meaningful ways. Substantially modifying Luther's, Luther's two-kingdom concept, Floyd would agree with this also. Rourke, um, in the book by Rourke. Bonhoeffer reasons that man has stolen the secret from God and knows good and evil. Humanity has lost something of this original character and so is ashamed of the nakedness. And the respondents or questioners that I questioned feel some shame. There seems little desire to cover shame which contradicts Bonhoeffer who says a desire to cover shame is implication of guilt. Bonhoeffer goes on to criticize Kant for not seeing the value of shame for human existence. It is the practitioner's thought that in his context it is not shame that is important, but the respondents are given the resources to deal with it. The question is how to deal with the shame. The respondents challenge Bonhoeffer at this point as they, as they do not dwell on shame as central human experience, for not Bonhoeffer's Christ's blood is the way to deal with shame. As a human resource of knowledge are not able to meet the I agree with the respondents who feel shame is not important. That is to say, the respondents need to be encouraged to feel good about themselves in their context. However, Bonhoeffer provides theological resources in dealing with shame through the blood of Jesus Christ. On the issue of Greek culture, Bonhoeffer uses it for his thinking, but builds over it with Christian theology. For example, he reflects on tragedy as coming from the Greeks, and then criticizes it by saying Luther developed tragedy further. The practitioners think that Bonhoeffer, the practitioner, thinks that Bonhoeffer is challenging Nietzsche by criticizing ancient Greek culture 
where Nietzsche uses it for his own ends. The respondents or questioners that I questioned about ancient Greek culture has no relevance to them. However, for Bonhoeffer, Nietzsche and the Western intellectual tradition and um, spokesmen such as Hitchens who thinks the cultural project today is to maintain the Greek tragedy, all of them regard this as a major issue. The practitioner thinks that for his own context the respondents need to be gently educated as to see how ancient culture is relevant as many ideas of the Bible come from the Greeks such as Logos. But Bonhoeffer is not critical enough of ancient Greek culture. Nietzsche and Hitchin's program is questionable as some Greek ideas were strange. For example, Pythagoras gave us mathematics but his weird monastic ethics are no base to build Western civilization. However, to be fair, Nietzsche was slightly more critical of some aspects of ancient Greek culture and I have to be careful of sweeping generalizations about him. The final issue to be considered in this section is suicide. Bonhoeffer says people commit suicide to give meaning to life because God exists, suicide is wrong. Suicide is a lack of faith and not a moral. F the respondents' understanding of suicide is mixed. Some respondents show the need for compassion. Other respondents have a hard attitude. For my context, I think Bonhoeffer's model is not appropriate as he responds to suicide was putrid considering his context. Bonhoeffer thought about death as a child, but more importantly from 1933 to 1944, suicide was a real problem among the Jews. It is estimated that one in four Jews in Berlin committed suicide during the height of Nazi power. Famous Jews such as Ernest Grunfeld committed suicide, so Bonhoeffer would know about the problem. Bonhoeffer could show more concern both in understanding action to help these Jews. I know he tried to ass assassinate Hitler and the Gestapo made life difficult, but I'm not sure he was contextual about suicide. This seems to be a problem for Christianity generally. So pagans who committed suicide. His negative view has prevailed above other early church fathers, but prejudice about suicide prevails today. Most Christian books on ethics don't discuss suicide. Euthanasia, yes, but not suicide. Note Giesler, David's Murray, and Hill's books. Considering that Samaritans have over 15% of their 1 million calls a year about suicide, this makes me realize in my context, respondents need to be encouraged to be practical, uh, to be lovingly practical. Perhaps support the Samaritans and educate some respondents uh, about a real problem. For my context then, Bonhoeffer's theology of shame is not helpful as its respondents should be made to feel good about themselves, but it's helpful in providing a way to deal with it in terms of the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ or the atonement. It helps me to see that I need to be more critical of Greek culture. Next, the suicide is a real problem today which which my own group needs educated about and encouraged to action. Bonhoeffer and Christian teaching uh, is not contextual enough in the sense that it's not listening to the problems that are in this area in our culture today. That is to say that the Bible, I believe, does have the answers to these questions about suicide, but we need to listen to what the culture is saying and then study the Bible and give the biblical response to suicide. I don't think that we're doing enough in this area. Prison Letters. So we've looked at Life Together by Bonhoeffer. We have looked at The Cost of Discipleship by Bonhoeffer. We have looked at his book on ethics and now we're going to move into his Prison Letters. Here I shall now consider Dawkins and uh, and his, uh, before I do, I'm of the opinion that the prison letters should be interpreted in line with the whole body of Bonhoeffer's work, as he still maintains core beliefs such as commitment to the Bible as a source of spiritual and theological reflection, having read the Old Testament two and a half times in prison. Also, it's important to remember that Bonhoeffer's poem, Who Am I?, gives us an important insight into the letters as a man who was struggling with his identity.
In Bonhoeffer's letters, he is trying to understand how Christianity relates to secularism. He sees the church's defense of Christianity as mature. The church has to become less religious and go to the world. The victory of secularism demands this. Bonhoeffer would still be committed to the Christian faith, i.e. the Bible, most of the, of the interviewees they share a criticism of religion with Bonhoeffer and but they are not challenged by secularism as Bonhoeffer is. Dawkins has three main challenges to Bonhoeffer and the respondents. He challenges their biblical literature. Even scholars such as McGrath never deal with Dawkins' comments on genocide and rape in the Old Testament but wax eloquently that Dawkins does not understand religion which does not deal with the detail of Dawkins' challenges. Dawkins challenges their idea of religion. He is negative about religion because he sees it as dogmatic and divisive. He challenges the respondents in the area of science as showing evidence that Christianity is not true. For my context, I think Dawkins helps me to see that the Bible study groups needs a pause uh, needs to be um, given apologetics. I think Bonhoeffer and the interviewers and Dawkins failed to see the good in religion. For example, how Muslim communities look after their elderly. I agree with the respondents that secularism should be challenged as Bonhoeffer does not realize that scientists have agendas and are not as objective as they are. For example, Dawkins in his scientific work often attacks religion religious people which calls into question his objectivity as a scientist. Conclusion So we come to the end um, of the lecture and we come into the final conclusion. In my context the Bible study group will be allowed freedom of views on Christology and spiritual life as Bonhoeffer's views uh, are a bit too dogmatic for uh, Bonhoeffer views on discipleship are helpful and gives us educational purposes but must be used in care specifically to watch out for the negative view of life. Bonhoeffer's theology of shame fails at some point but he does provide resources in helping people to know forgiveness of sin. His use of ancient Greek culture is not critical enough but it's an important subject to understand and future studies and research needs to be done. On suicide, Bonhoeffer is not contextual enough, not understanding his own times and therefore fails to respond in an adequate way to the issue of suicide. Finally, Dawkins challenges Bonhoeffer and the respondents on the Bible and perhaps more research and thinking needs to be done in my own Bible study group to answer questions about Dawkins. Um, I can provide, I could provide a lot of stuff in my own Bible studies to people who, who want answers defending the Bible, but I do think that um, more work can be done in that area. Bonhoeffer, the respondents and Dawkins are too critical of religion secularism in the form of science has been too readily accepted by Bonhoeffer and a more critical approach is required as scientists like Dawkins are not as objective as they may count. In this essay an assumption was made that Christ objectively in the word was Chalcedonian and I continue to make that statement because I believe it's biblical I have to admit lecture and the critical reflection on how Bonhoeffer's theology relates to um, my Bible study group that I am prejudiced in that I committed to the Chalcedonian uh, Christology which Bonhoeffer advocates. But I believe that Christology is biblical. I see a theology, I, I, my, my understanding
that there needs to be a development of the theology of freedom and a theology of suicide for further development. I have found particularly in this lecture the exercise of being a contextual thinker in, invigorating to give people more freedom in allowing them to think through their issues. I do believe as a, a Bible study leader that we do have a responsibility to teach the Bible. We have a responsibility to engage with the questions and pastoral issues each person in the Bible study group has. I have noted some of the uh, pastoral issues of my own Bible study group and I've tried to grapple with the theology of Bonhoeffer and how that relates and his historical context and how that relates to my group. My group are a few people who have very little teaching and Christian background. I think that a lot of Bonhoeffer is a bit too deep for them at this present time. But in years to come, I will encourage them to read more of Bonhoeffer because I believe there is a rich resource and encouragement for them in the growing of their Christian life. This lecture is a critical reflection designed to help you think through some of the relevance of Bonhoeffer in light of your own context and contemporary thinking. Thank you for listening and God bless you. The bibliography uh, for this lecture is as follows. The City of God, St. Augustine Penguin Books, London, 1948. E. Bethage, Di Dietrich Bonhoeffer, A Biography, Fortress Press, Minneapolis, 2000. D. Bonhoeffer, Ethics, SEM, London, 1962. D. Bonhoeffer, Life Together, SEM, London, 1999. D. Bonhoeffer, Cost of Discipleship, SEM, London, 1971. D. Bonhoeffer, Letters, London, 1971. A. Broi, Islam in the Modern World, Publishes United Limited, Lahore, 1975. S. Chu, Human, All Too Human, Documentary on Nietzsche, TV, BBC, 1999. J. Davis, Evangelical Ethics, um, Presbyterian Reform Publishing, New Jersey, 1993. R. Dawkins, The Blind Watchmaker, Penguin Books, London, 2006. R. Dawkins, The God Delusion, Black Swan, London, 2007. R. Dawkins, Virus of the Mind, in War, in Warburton, Philosophy of Basic Readings, Radlich, London. W. Floyd, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, David Fors, The Modern Theologians, Blackwell Publishing, Oxford, 2005. N. Geisler, Christian Ethics, Apollos, Leicester, 1980. E. Graham, Speaking of God in Public Correlation. In Graham, Walton Ward, Theological Reflection, SEM, London, 2007. C. Hitchens, Hitchens and Douglas Wilson Debate, Westminster Seminary, 30th-10th-09. M. Hill, How and Why of Love, Matthias Media, Kingsford, 2002. John, Gospel of John, Chapter 1, Verse 1, Holy Bible, NIV, Hodder, 1981. D. Lester, Suicide and the Holocaust, Nova Science Publishers, New York, 2005. S. Loeb, The Development, a, a Case Study, Mythology and the Information Technology. A. McGrath, The Dawkins Delusion, SPCK, London, 2008. J. Murray, Principles of Conduct, William B. Erdmans, Michigan, 1957. F. Nietzsche, Basic Writings of Nietzsche, The Modern Library, New York. Ramson, Reality and Resistance, Westminster, John Knox Press, Louisville, 2005. Ramson, L., The Life and Thought of Bonhoeffer, Unpublished Lecture 1 and 2, Convocation, 2006. E. Room, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Continu Continuum, New York, 2002. J. Rubin, Qualitative Interviewing, Sage Publications, uh, Thousand Oaks, 1995. M. Rumscheid, The Formation of Bonhoeffer's Theology in the Cambridge Companion to Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Grunchy Cambridge University Press, Cambridge, 2002. 
D. Rourke, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Religion Online. E. Robertson, The Shame and the Sacrifice, Hodder and Sorton, London, 1987. G. Roberts, Speaking Truth to Power, Westminster, John Knox, Louisville, 2005. Bertram Russell, A History of Western Ltd., London, 1946. Samaritans, Facts and Figures, www.samaritans.org, date 18809. Case Study, A Research Method, the 2nd of the 12th, 06. Tear Fund, Church Going in the UK, April 2007, www.tearfund. J. Vanier, Community and Growth, Darton, Longman and Todd, London, 2001. So that is the lecture of Bonhoeffer. I've given you um, some general ideas about his thinking, some of his key books, and how that might be relevant in my own context. And I've tried to engage with people like Nietzsche and Dawkins and thinkers uh, in terms of uh, critical reflection concerning Bonhoeffer's theology. And uh, I hope that this lecture has stimulated you to think about theology, to see that theology is not um, in a hybrid castle. As you saw as a theologian there, I engage with contemporary thinkers and uh, contemporary resources and also rooted the theological reflection in, in historical and cultural context. So I hope that shows you that theology is not uh, some ivory anti-intellectual subject but it's a, a very vigorous uh, intellectual discipline and um, so I hope that's been a blessing to you and I would encourage you to go on and study more of Dietrich Bonhoeffer so thank you for listening and God bless you